In my first video, I explained that I'd started the OMAD lifestyle back in 2009, when it wasn't even a thing. It was my last hope to prevent cancer. I had done several calorie restriction diets, but I never stayed in them long enough to lose any significant amount of weight, and I usually gained all the weight back. After 12 years in OMAD, could I say that I have prevented cancer? Is it really scientifically sound to recommend OMAD in order to prevent cancer? Let's sort out these questions in this video, so stick around, you don't want to miss anything. I'm Juan Sarmiento. I have been in OMAD for 12 years and with it I have lost weight and gained physical and mental performance. For the most part I have remained in excellent health at an age when there is a physical and mental decline in most people. But did I really reduce my risk of cancer? Let's address this question in this video. But before I dive into this exciting subject, be sure to subscribe to my channel and give a like to this video. Remember, if you click on the bell, you will be notified of my videos to come. For years, science has warned us to maintain a low body weight to prevent cancer. Obesity predisposes to cancer. Calorie restriction diets are clearly linked to cancer prevention too. But most of us have struggled with weight loss. So I don't have to tell you that caloric restriction is a horrible way to lose weight and keep it off. In a previous video I discussed how we get hungry and the effects of the carbohydrate-based metabolism, which depends on food intake. This is why it is so hard to simply restrict our food intake indefinitely. OMAD, on the other hand, once habituated, is easy to maintain as a lifestyle. After 12 years in OMAD, I know it is very doable. No special training or physical strength is required. However, could OMAD or any other form of fasting prevent cancer? Let's not kid ourselves. To answer this question, we need a long-term clinical study lasting one or two decades. In such a study, two relatively large groups of individuals are needed. One would eat a regular Western diet three times a day, and the other the OMAD regimen. Recruiting such a population to commit to years of OMAD might not be easy. This is probably true even if we could convince them of the benefits of OMAD. So I am not expecting such a study anytime soon. If we cannot do such a study, could we at least find a scientific basis for our hypothesis? Could OMAD as a lifestyle prevent cancer. Obesity is thought to be a factor in at least 13 different cancers, including a reduction in survival as well as an increase in recurrence. Clearly, both prevention efforts and improving outcomes in cancer patients may focus on weight control. Caloric restriction is thought to prevent cancer by decreasing production of growth factors, inflammatory cytokines, and anabolic hormones. Caloric restriction also decreases oxidative stress and free radical-induced DNA damage. The mechanisms by which excess adiposity affects cancer risk and prognosis is complex. However, chronic inflammation, insulin resistance, and altered sex hormone metabolism may be key factors. Further, obese cancer survivors are at risk for poorer cancer prognosis and increased risk of diabetes and other diseases. Intermittent fasting exists in several forms, including alternative day fasting or fasting for one or two non-consecutive days a week. 6-1 or 5-2 intermittent fasting. 
Then there is time-restricted feeding, or TRF, which limits food consumption from 4 to 12 hours every day. One meal a day with a maximum window of two hours a day is not usually mentioned in the scientific literature. However, with OMAD, we may have a greater control over insulin and ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone. Thus, it may appear that science is missing out on the best of methods, in my humble opinion. See my video about hunger. Nevertheless, fasting in all its forms does reduce obesity and insulin resistance, as caloric restriction would. Only intermittent fasting is easily sustainable over prolonged periods. With intermittent fasting, patients without cancer decrease their glucose, insulin, and leptin blood levels. These are measurable indicators of a reduction in cancer risk as a result of intermittent fasting. This is because these indicators are implicated in the pathogenesis of cancer. In simple words, intermittent fasting may ameliorate some changes that would otherwise induce cancer. But that is not all. There are other changes that may be beneficial in cancer prevention. Ketone body formation is unique to fasting and the ketogenic diet. I have told you that they are produced in the liver from fatty acids as the main source of energy for the brain. Ketone bodies inhibit histone deacetylases. This is a fancy way of saying that they reduce tumor growth and may also protect against oxidative stress. Ketone bodies, however, only increase after between 18 and 24 hours of fasting and do not peak until two weeks of fasting. Thus, OMAD with high intensity interval training for three weeks in a row is the start of our lifestyle change with ketosis at the core. Let's not forget autophagy, discussed in previous videos. It facilitates intracellular homeostasis by recycling molecules and clearing damaged proteins and organelles. Sugars, nucleosides and nucleotides, amino acids and fatty acids are reduced by the cell. Autophagy might protect normal cells against malignant transformation. It has also been shown to sensitize cancer cells to chemotherapy. How intermittent fasting induces autophagy needs to be studied further, especially with regard to the duration of the fasting needed to induce autophagy. Tumor cells use glucose from their vicinity to generate energy by a process called glycolysis. This is less efficient at producing energy than the oxygen-dependent energy process in normal cells. However, they do it up to 70 times more often. This is known as the Warburg effect. However, glycolysis produces both energy, ATP, and also raw material, carbons, to support rapid growth. But what if we were to cut the amount of glucose available to the tissues? We would cause cellular stress so that cells have to focus on conservation of resources. But cancer cells are not very good at conserving because they are too busy multiplying. In normal individuals, intermittent fasting could be helpful in preventing cancer beyond simple reduction of body weight. We know that weight loss is sustainable over years with intermittent fasting, 12 years in my case. We now know that intermittent fasting might help prevent cancer by reducing blood glucose and insulin, 
by increasing autophagy and increasing ketone bodies. Time will tell if these theoretical indicators are sufficient to increase longevity by preventing the occurrence of cancer. I, for one, am willing to be the subject of my own research. After 12 years in OMAD, I'm healthier and stronger than ever before. I have to give credit to OMAD for my original changes and their sustainability. Without a doubt, for me, with OMAD, life is looking up. Thank you.